Welcome to the first game of BSL Season 13. This is going to be Group A for people watching on Twitch Live. These matches might be a little bit disjointed because I'm going to be hopping from group to group as I have the replays available. Covering the round of 32, I don't know that I'm going to cover the entirety of the round of 32 as I don't know that all the replays are going to be uploaded, but I am going to try to cover as much of the round of 32 before the round of 16 starts for either Chobu League or Hasu League. Up left-hand corner, we have Mr. Cat, who is a... Uh, Czech player. I have not seen him play before, but knowing that he's in Hasu League, I can make just this flat-out assumption that he's a fairly talented player. Thebus, I've seen, I think, once or twice. He is, I believe, I'm, hopefully I'm not reversing this. I, re uh, I think he is a Ukrainian Terran player. This is going to be on Revolver, by the way, which is going to be the first match in the round of 32, so you're probably going to be seeing a lot of this map. Revolver, I feel like this was... A map maker showboating. So you got these two eggs at this very creative natural expansion. A bit of minerals in the way over here. Uh, a ramp leading out to this third, and kind of a ramp. And so basically, if you are going, if you're going, it's short rush, uh, rush distances um, horizontally, or is it vertically? The point being, there's there's short rush distances from base to base, but at the same time, it's a little difficult to rush into because of the dual ramps, and also the trying to get up past these lurker eggs that are planted here and then you've got the middle of the map which is wide open you have double ramp on either side and it's just a, it's kind of interesting where you can kind of traverse the exterior fairly easily and but and defend holdings at least defend three bases fairly easily because uh yeah wide ramp here but the, the interesting thing i'm getting ahead of myself the interesting thing i feel about this map is regardless of what the matchup is, whether it be even mere matchups, it feels like every single matchup is disrupted. The standard meta is disrupted because of this map and its layout, which just shows you the level of creativity that I think went into this map. Thebus sending out a scout in bottom right-hand corner first, opposite corner we have actually skipping Zealot, not even sending out a probe scout, and a cybernetic score warping in about halfway for Mr. Cat. We do see what looks like is starting out to be a front door seal for Thebus. He's, I think this gap is not zealot tight, however. Marine uh, being built, we'll have to see. He would know better than I. So if he, But we're not going to even see the zealot uh, getting out to that position. Factory already planted down. It looks like we still have three SCV on gas. So interestingly enough, it looks like Thebus might be opting for potential factory pushes. Which I'm not sure if the reasoning behind this, or at least he's leaving those three players on gas, looks like the SCV holding in the upper right-hand corner for now. Probe is going to wander up here and not going to find it. That <laughs> SCV scout accidentally dodging uh, the probe on location. But I'm wondering how much of this... Actually, Dragoon uh, being built also range right there. And I'm wondering how much of the decision to... Oh, now actually... Never mind. Pulling the SCV off gas now. I was wondering how much of that decision might be because the current meta in pvt has shifted if you caught the asl finals opening up two gate or sorry two base carrier has become more of a popular build it's kind of the thing that what the professionals do everybody else attempts to do as well probe hiding in the corner going to let that scv pass and going to be able to sneak the nexus undisrupted as a result probe trying to force its way up getting killed that's four marines this barracks is going to and actually these marines should be able to bully that dragoon out once range is finished, this Dragoon will have a better shot at this, but they have equalized range, so they are going to get pushed back in the meantime. The second Dragoon is going to go ahead and wait in that back corner. So the Dragoon is going to go ahead and exit to the south so it can re-engage. We do have a machine shop, first tank being produced, additional Marines being produced, which I'm not sure if the reasoning behind this is just to feel more secure at the natural expansion or if this is, in fact, going to turn into a rush. I think Thebus is just planning on plop. He's got this SCV in position to potentially put down a very safe command center but he's already got the five marines out he's looking to hunt down that dragoon it looks like that dragoon does have well nope doesn't have range quite yet so getting pushed back that's five marines to maybe try to pick off that dragoon a little bit more rapidly to allow this command center to be plopped down unharassed tank moving down we do have a vulture and mines being produced otherwise to create a degree of map control finally range is there which means Mr. Cat can start working on those Marines at range, but there's just, as you can see, there's just not a lot of room to work with. Even with Dragoon pressure, like, and this is what I mean by this map disrupting a lot of the standard meta. Even with the Dragoon pressure standardly with those Lurker eggs, there's just not a lot of space to make that happen. Mr. Cat staging, so the 
Dragoon moving to the north, pulling out to the right, and it looks like this is kind of be kind of a mini rush from Thebus with four Marines, a tank, and a Vulture pressing up, perhaps just to get mine positioning in the middle of the map, but he's continuing to press this forward. I don't know how much success he's going to have against three Dragoons going up uh, to the high ground, though, once again. So, Reign of Fire, yeah, as you can see, and so it's really early game shenanigans like this are very much punished, in my opinion. Mind drag into one Dragoon and actually splashing on the second. And so with a bad mind drag for Mr. Cat, he's now in a lot of trouble. And I think if he had just held the ramp, he would have been fine. But instead, Dragoon actually sneaking behind, picking off the siege tank. Vultures in that natural expansion. The probe's flooding back out. It looks like that Dragoon is able to take out one Vulture. But now that natural expansion getting assailed. And Mr. Cat not really being... I'm not sure if there's lag or what's going on here. But Mr. Cat really not being disciplined as far as his approach to uh, dealing with these mines. So this natural expansion being attacked. There are three gateways down. The Dragoon, the second wave Dragoon should be enough to repel this. There's also an observatory, but honestly just walking with mines should be sufficient. There's also this Dragoon sneaking up because it's coming from the low ground, ending up with misfire chance. It might get wiped out. And again, Mr. Cat lose, almost losing another Dragoon to yet another mine drag. Let's see if he's going to trigger this last mine. Another Vulture moving up, trying to get readily moving up, planting... It's actually going to get one mine down. Is it... Oof. Ah! Okay. Mr. Cat is able to wipe that out. And now Phoebus overextending is, might end up losing that siege tank. Here's the thing. Yeah, this is a ramp. Yeah, it's easier to defend. But you keep pressing, pressing, pressing. Eventually, you're going to run out of troops. And it looks like he still wants to play aggressive. He's going to go ahead and take down that right uh, lurker egg. He m might take down the left and continue this pressure. He's already got three factories down. He's adding a fourth. Very aggressive game to start this off. He's got Vulture Speed upgrading as well. Again, I don't know how successful Vultures are going to be at pressing this natural expansion because of just the small... It just doesn't take a lot of Dragoons. So maybe if they cycle in from the north. I like the Dragoons already staging at that 12 o'clock location. An Observer out already. As far as just flat probe counts, it looks like about even. And yeah, it looks like Phoebus opting to potentially be more aggressive. He's opening up everything to be able to station troops more rapidly. In the meantime, Mr. Cat going to go ahead and play a little bit more passively, try to take that 12 o'clock base. Mr. Cat cycling through is going to see that Nexus being grabbed, might be able to take out that probe right there, but shouldn't be able to get a lot more out of this. The Dragoon should be able to cycle around to the north, but again, I don't know that these vultures... Well, I take it back. If Mr. Cat just leaves his front door open for the vultures to just walk through and do damage... It'll end up costing him, but in the meantime, it doesn't feel like, to me, that Phoebus is getting a lot done with these vultures. He's expending a lot of them, and yeah, he's getting a mine planted here or there, but not a lot else. Pressing forward with the, the siege tank, here's one thing, is with the siege tank on the low ground, kind of covering that upper edge, you can do interesting pushes, kind of from the, the middle of the map. I like the buildings floating right there to provide a bit of vision. You also have that turret to the corner. Vulture's now cycling into that 12 o'clock location. Thebus, wanting to press into this, has significant amounts of siege tanks and vultures there to take this base down. Also has an SCV in position to provide some repair support. The Dragoon's moving up for Mr. Cat. So it looks like the Dragoon's, while they're split, getting wiped out. And this Nexus wiped out Mr. Cat all of a sudden in the red. I would say that he was playing a little bit too greedy to take this, but honestly, I feel like he just didn't mount a sufficient enough defense uh, with the units he had to really stop Phoebus from being aggressive. Perhaps he wasn't counting on Phoebus being so aggressive in this match. Phoebus grabbing his own 6 o'clock base. He's certainly in the lead at this stage. Also has Mr. Cat in the red. Mr. Cat now clearing some mines out at his front. Looks like a turret being established there as well. Phoebus looking to end the game right here, pushing with siege tanks and vultures into this natural expansion. And Mr. Cat, I don't see any Zealots. I see a shuttle in production, but I don't think there's any Zealots, any Zealot speed, etc., etc. And Phoebus just continuing to press this attack forward. And it, it is just a handful of Dragoons, which are not going to cut it against this positioning on that corner. And more reinforcements are flooding in. It looks like some Dragoons were trying to cut off those reinforcements, but they're being surrounded by some Vultures and Mines. The Observer also being picked off in position, so it's not even going to have spotting on those siege tanks. So nothing looking... Looks like Mr. Cat is in a lot of trouble here. More Dragoons being produced. And this is off uh, three gateways. Additional gateways being plopped down. We do have that Citadel of Adun working on Zealot Leg Speed. 
My concern is, is that it is going to be too little too late for Mr. Cat. Two Dragoons being scooped up. Not the ideal. Usually you want Zealots in there being scooped up to go ahead and deal with the Siege Tank on the low ground. Maybe get a Mind Drag there. Looks like that he's going to... Whoop! Got a Mind Drag, but two of the Mines looked like they were duds, practically. And did not explode on the Siege Tank. And actually didn't deal with the... Perhaps because of the scoop up of the, into the shuttle didn't pay off there. There's already several turrets in position to defend against that shuttle from that right-hand side, and Phoebus already pressing into this. In the meantime, he's got that 6 o'clock base well-saturated. He's sitting at... He's added a 5th factory, and is just continuing to press... Is taking out that last egg, so he continue to reinforce this heavy metal assault on the front. Mr. Cat just trying to fan out, buy himself some time, get a sufficient... He's got a, a lot more Dragoons as far as a potential follow-up. So Thebus needs to get reinforcements because now this potentially could just be broken through pure Dragoon pressure. It will cost him, however. The shuttle moving out might be able to get a Mind Drag. Looks like he is going to get a Mind Drag into that Siege Tank. Seconds! Dragoon taking out the SCV as well. But Thebus moving up with more Siege Tanks and more Vultures to equalize this. The Vultures just scooting across that low ground. Finally, some Zealots with that leg speed going to be able to make their way across. So Mr. Cat... Here's the thing, is even if Mr. Cat breaks this, which he should be able to momentarily, even if he breaks it, he's behind a base. He's behind in the overall production count. So I don't know what his options are to, to follow this up. One critical thing on his side that's been beneficial is Phoebus, in the midst of all of this pressure, has neglected weapons upgrades, so it's kind of small reprieves. Not that there's been uh, upgrades on the opposite side to really capitalize on that, but it's kind of small mercies is what I'm trying to get at. A zealot walking up going to be able to take that siege tank. Vulture trying to push up to take that out, but that siege tank easily taken out. And it looks like the shuttle able to ferry some units to the south to go ahead and mostly break the rest of this contain. In the midst of this, it looks like we have seen a shift to Stargate. Looks like Templar Archives there as well, so two base Arbiter as far as a follow-up. However, Mr. Cat really needs to find an additional base someplace. And there's already vultures and mines and a lot of things out out there to prevent, first of all, sneaky bases uh, from being taken, but additional bases being taken at any location. Thebus losing that contain. The one advantage here for Mr. Cat is where usually there's a big cohesive Terran army pushing out against you. A lot of that was piecemeal picked apart in the process of those contains. The vulture sitting back trying to defend against what looks like it's just going to be a single dragoon in that shuttle. I think this is mostly like a bait from Mr. Cat to kind of force these troops back and force Thebus into a more defensive position. Looks like we have a drop at the natural expansion with a Zealot right there. It looks like the Vulture is going to be able to go up and take care of that with that Siege Tank. So not a lot of disruption happening there. Still no Goliaths out. And now Mr. Cat moving out with his army, realizing he needs to do some damage. I think he's realizing that third base is up. So he needs to strike and strike now. This is a good time to do it, but man, there's a lot of Siege Tanks out there. A lot of Siege Tanks. Let's see if he can get it done with what he's got on the ground. Zealots moving forward. Those vultures wiping out the first zealot line. Just Dragoons left, but the siege tanks are out of position. They're going to have to reinforce from the rear. Coming from the left now, sieging over that bridge. The vultures working on that left Dragoon. Siege, tank sieging up. That's going to force Mr. Cat back. More reinforcements of zealots coming down. Keep in mind, they are speed upgraded, so that's a fast reinforcement path. However, and you still have that shuttle hanging out over that natural expansion. However, I think Mr. Cat... Might, uh, might, this might be too little too late. A lot of Dragoons moving into that natural expansion. Those Siege Tanks are going to have to reposition from that third base at the 6 o'clock position to defend this. The Dragoons working on the Vultures in the meantime. The Vultures trying to keep them distracted and off that SCV line. The Dragoons trying to clear what they can, but it looks like the, the Siege Tanks reinforcing from the right have plenty of firepower, and that is GG for Mr. Cat, realizing he's not going to be able to break a base. He's not going to be able to do any sort of economic damage. And so a quick one, Phoebus just being extremely aggressive in the early game and pushing basically punishing Mr. Cat for taking a third before he really I, I honestly feel like he was in a position to defend it he just didn't wasn't quite able to wasn't quite able to defend it but that is first game BSL season 13 also for those on Twitch in the United States this was done on Veterans Day happy Veterans Day it's good to be back it's good to be doing the BSL replay special thanks to everybody that got me uh, kind of interim replays in the midst of matches, <clears throat> Gypsy Jumper uh, Dreamer got me a bunch of them. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. We're going to move on to the next match for Twitch, and hopefully I will have more of Group A down the line.
Otherwise, if you want to see the brackets, I will post them on Discord. Uh, Spoiler-free brackets. Unfortunately, the main site challenge, if you go to it, or challenge, it's got an O in there. I'm not sure, entirely sure how to pronounce it. <clears throat> it has spoilers. But if you uh, look at the... Um, but if you, if you, I'll try to make sure that there's posting of the various brackets there for you if you want to see them uh, there. And I'll try to remember to put the description in the Discord. It's going to be a while before this gets uploaded. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.